Hey guys, Growth Camel. Um, <clears throat> some of you might remember that at the Desert 100 last year, so the 2022 race, I hit a rock, had a big crash, um, ended up splitting one of the rad lines or rad hoses. I think I f***ed up the rad when I crashed. I got no coolant. I gotta take the water to my bladder and put it in my rad. Gushing out here and I don't know from where. I don't know where it's leaking from. Lost all the coolant, rode 30 miles uh, to finish the race, knowing that I was probably going to have to do a motor. Um, got super hot to the point that it was knocking. Uh, so I found a, a CP2 from a crashed MT07. I get this thing shipped, um, intending to just like slap it in my bike and be done. So I was never planning on riding uh, the motor that got overheated at the race for any amount of time. Uh, so I ordered this motor, it's coming, then UPS loses it. Battling with them to get paid on the insurance on it. Um, and then it shows up and it's all banged up. Um, there was a, a metal rod that had gone through the box and hit the, uh, hit the engine casing and punched a hole in the engine case. Not very big, big enough. It was leaking oil everywhere. So I fought with them for months to try and get uh, paid for this damage on the thing and they weren't paying and just dragging their heels uh, or dragging their feet. Um, so I couldn't do anything with the motor uh, because I didn't know what was gonna happen with this thing. So anyway, long story short, I ended up running this motor that I super overheated um, for over a year. It's been 13 months and it was running fine. Compression was good. And then I've just noticed lately uh, going out on rides, it's been really hard to start. I'm guessing is to the point where it's just unhappy. So um, I I've got this the the motor that uh, that UPS damaged. Um, we got that sorted out, and over the winter um, I did a little freshen up on it. It was super low miles, but I decided uh, since it was out anyway that I was going to put a high compression head gasket in. So it's some Spears Racing. Um, it's a 10 thou gasket instead of the normal 23 and it bumps the compression from 11.5 to 12.5. So like a huge difference that should be an absolute, absolutely noticeable um, in the amount of um, power that the bike has. It's still not gonna be, you know, it's not an 890 KTM, but it should definitely be noticeable. So for, <clears throat> for 90 bucks, um, plus a few head bolts and a couple hours of my time, good deal. Um, so I did a time lapse taking the motor out. And if I had known it was gonna go as fast as it did, I just would have shot video. It was so fast, like um, without stopping, I bet you half an hour to get this motor out. Like from totally totally assembled running bike to uh, motor out sitting on the floor, like literally half an hour. Man, crazy. Just didn't even have to take the air box out, pop the wiring, drain the uh, coolant, and off we go. Right now, there's no clutch in here. Um, interesting, interesting story. This motor only had about 2,000 miles on it when I bought it. Um, and after we had done five miles of hell uh, on the, I had the original motor in here, I thought, ooh, I better better take the clutch plates out, measure them and swap, because you know the, the ones out of this are brand new. Um, pulled all that stuff out and everything is still in spec. So all of the hard miles I've put on this bike uh, over the last three years, the clutch plates are still in spec. The, um, the pressure springs, uh, or the springs for the pressure plate were a mil and a half short. So I did notice that my clutch was getting a little bit soft and felt kind of mushy, and I assumed it was because it was slipping. Um, and it's just the, I took the, got it hot enough that I took the temper out of uh, the springs. So they actually relaxed. So when I put the springs that were out of this low mileage motor in, uh, tighten the clutch right back up and felt like it was brand new. So I've got to take the clutch parts uh, out of the original motor, which are the ones out of this. Um, so that'll take a little bit of time to get that stuff all swapped over. 
Um, I need to change the oil pan on this motor because this is the one that got beat up by the courier uh, and it's got some spider cracks in it um, and it's going to leak oil. I'm gonna show you guys this. This is the clutch shaft and it's actually just got a little um, little gear on the bottom there and when your uh, there's a rack and pinion kind of idea so it slides in here when you turn the top it just pulls that back and forth and pulls the pressure plate in and out so we do get emails from people when they're doing their one finger clutch wondering if that motion is uh, is acceptable and it totally is that's just the gap here you can see there's a little uh, plastic washer on the bottom I have got this horrendous cold, super snotty. So I'm all sniffly and shitty. I apologize for sniffling in your ear. So this is uh, the inside of your motor uh, on the clutch side. So right here, probably won't see it, there's not enough light. That was actually one of the spots that was punched through um, during shipping. So there's a metal rod came through the crate um, and hit that and punched through. So there's a bunch of metal in here. This is timing chain here, so this goes up to the cams and runs them. That is oil pump down here, and this is the spud or slot that um, runs your water pump. So that guy engages here, turns the impeller on the water pump. This is the inside. Uh, this is the basket and inside, I can't, off the top of my head, I can't think of uh, the actual proper name for it, but um, this is your crank here. So your crank turns the clutch basket <clears throat> and then this attaches to your transmission main shaft. So you can see it spinning down there. And then your discs sit in here and transmit the power. Just basically lock these two together and that's how you get drive to the rear wheel. Kind of annoyed with myself because I forgot about this leaky oil pan. Should have done it when the motor was out of the bike, but. But I did not. And I had it off before, obviously, because I inspected it. So you can see on the outside here, it's got this dent. Uh, this is cast aluminum though, so cast aluminum doesn't dent very well. And you can see it's all spidered inside here which is the problem, which we can take that up, um, no problem, but it's actually cracked up here as well, which is along this line. So it looks reasonable from the outside, but the inside's a different story. So I've got to harvest the pan off of the other motor. So this is that little rack I was talking about. I've got teeth in here. So when you turn the shaft, this gets pulled up. So this is the clutch pressure plate here. And then these are the actual discs. You can see how nice these discs still look. That's a lot of abuse on these guys. This is all the Moab stuff. Uh, five miles of hell and Pritchett Canyon and everything else. So these guys just go in alternating at a fiber and a steel and a fiber. So if you're putting a new clutch in, you want to uh, soak these guys in oil first overnight. The longer you can leave them, the better. Uh, and it makes sure that there's oil kind of all through there. If you don't do that and you put them in dry, they'll wear faster and you can get a, a chirp out of them. And normally I'd be busting out the calipers to measure all this stuff to make sure it's within spec. Um, I know that it's in spec, I don't need to do it. Uh, these guys have no wear on them, they're in great shape. It's really quite surprising given the, ride, given the riding that we do. 
Now you need to check on your specific bike. Um, often the last disc that goes on uh, is different. You can see how wide uh, these pads are compared to compared to this. They're they're fifty percent bigger, um, and I don't know what the I don't know what the technical reason for that is. It's just something that I've noticed over the years. And then these have all been going in here, uh, but this guy is going to go there. So there's the two sets of two sets of grooves, and the regular ones go in here. And then the last one on a lot of bikes. I'm not saying everyone. But a lot of bikes, uh, the last disc for whatever reason goes on um, differently. So we're going to put the pressure plate on here and that goes on like so. And I'm going to have to run to the office to uh, check the manual to see what the torque is on these bolts. So like I said, when I took the uh, clutch apart before, the discs were in great shape. I was really surprised. Um, the springs were under length, uh, which is really weird. When they get hot, they lose their temper and they compress a little bit. Um, so that's what happened with, with the originals. Um, so they were a millimeter, a millimeter, half uh, too short. So it's not putting as much pressure on the uh, pressure plate as it should. So swapped these new springs and it tightened everything up. So uh, that's something to be aware of. Uh, I don't know, given this bike is, or this motor is the same one in the MT-07, uh, that bike's got a lot of uh, go-fast performance parts. So someone might have um, different clutch springs available for it, I haven't looked. If you put bigger, beefier springs in, then your clutch pull gets, uh, gets stiffer too. So just something to be aware of. So the spec for these bolts is a whopping eight newton meters, uh, which is 70 inch pounds. Um, so you want a quarter inch drive ratchet. And usually when you're doing these, they give you a spec to kind of do this in a couple of rounds, but I, I'm guessing because the torque spec is so low that uh, we're just doing it in one, but I'm gonna go around, I'll get these, uh, kind of go around in a circle here and get them all sort of started. Uh, I don't have a gasket for the clutch cover. I thought that I did, um, and it is Sunday evening, so nobody's open. My gasket uh, goo is all dried out. Um, I do have the oil sump gasket, though, so we'll pull the gasket off of uh, off the motor, the original motor, and slap it on here, um, and then I can put the cover on here just to keep the dust out of it, and I can tackle that uh, tomorrow when I get goo. <coughs> So we got the oil panel cleaned off, fresh gasket on it. The mounting surfaces on both the oil pan and the motor are clean, clean and dry. So I need to do the gasket goo on the clutch cover. When that's done, I can put the water pump on, I can put the uh, rad hoses on, and I can get these guys on, skid plate, everything else, bodywork tank, and we're good to go. Um, just don't have the goo, so tomorrow. So we've got some gasket goo. Uh, we're gonna put on the clutch cover and get that all set up and get the bolts torqued up uh, and give it some time to tack up before I put oil in it. I'm just taking a razor blade and cleaning off all of the old gasket material and we'll clean all the oil and stuff off here too make sure all the schmagma from your old gasket is out of the way hasn't fallen into the hasn't fallen into the housing or the cover Because this motor's only got 1,500 or 2,000 miles on it, whatever it was, um, the gasket's not really baked on. It's pretty, uh, pretty easy to get off. So 
So when we're going to put the cover on, there's a few things that need to happen and need to line up. Um, in the middle here it is the clutch shaft that I showed you earlier. That needs to slide onto this guy. Your release pull-out. Probably not the proper term for it, but whatever you want to call it. Um, so that needs to line up. Right now the teeth are pointed to the back. Uh, and then this is your water pump drive. And that's kind of sitting at about, I don't know, 9.30 or 3.30, whatever. And then we've got this guy here that we need to line up. So when I had the cover on here loosely, uh, that stuff was all engaged. So it looks like we're in a pretty good spot to get that back on. Everything looks to be good. If you are putting this on and this isn't engaging, you can just slowly, you can just slowly turn your water pump impeller uh, to get that to line up and then everything should snap in. But because this one was just, uh, everything was good, I don't wanna mess with it. So I'm just gonna do one last wipe down here on this cover, the mods and gasket maker and get everything put together. This is my favorite gasket stuff, the right stuff. Um, just seems to work better than everything else. A little more money, but worth it when you don't have leaky gaskets. I find most people put on entirely too much sealant and then it oozes out everywhere. If it oozes out on the outside of the case, not a big deal, but the stuff that oozes on the inside can end up in the uh, it ends up in the crankcase. It can get chewed up with the oil pump. It can plug the the oil pickup screen uh, and starve starve parts for oil. And then you're doing a motor rebuild. I've seen it several times over the years. More automotive than bike, but something to keep in mind. You need way less goo than you than you think. So that's all on here pretty sparingly, and then I'm actually just going to take my finger and make sure it's on here as evenly as I can. Just make sure there's no bare aluminum showing that it's all got sealant on it. If you have any of this stuff off, this is really important, it's an alignment dowel. And there's actually two on this guy. So when you put this whole thing together, that helps you get everything started in the right spot. And they can fall off. Fall off. When you take a part off, it may not stick in either one and it may come tumbling out. So just have a look. If you, these are blind holes, meaning that they don't go all the way through, it's not a bolt hole, it's just for a dowel. So if you're missing one of those spots, there's no dowel, just have a look around on the floor. It may be laying there. So lining this guy up, lining this up, this up, and the two dowels, kind of all at the same time. Pulling the rad hoses out of the way here, or the pipes. And the clutch is the hardest to get lined up because it's kind of floppy. get it you can actually use it to pull the if you turn it it'll help pull everything in so we're just going to get a bunch of these retaining bolts started some of the bolts have to come out because we've got UHMW um, case covers but right now I just want to get this all uh, firmed up so that the uh, sealant can set up properly We're gonna let that tack up and then we'll come back to it a little later today. Just back at this after a few days off. Um, really close here to getting it wrapped up. Uh, I had one thing I was stalled on and um, it is one of the engine mounts. On the right side here, there's a 12 mil bolt that goes into the engine um, through the frame. But there is an internal nut here. It's threaded, super fine thread, and then this guy's, I don't know, 15 or 16 mil. And it's, you can maybe see, 
there's a gap here between the engine and the frame. So the deal is that you take a socket or a Torx, there's tiny little cuts up, cutouts in here, you can barely see them. And you put it in here and then you spin it in and it takes up that slack. So you're not stressing the motor or the frame. So it like zeroes out there. I had a really hard time finding a bit that would fit. It's metric, so it would have been 13 mil, but I couldn't find a 13 mil um, Allen wrench anywhere. But half inch uh, Imperial is very close to 13. There's probably a torque size that would fit, but I don't have anything that big. Uh, and then we're gonna put the 14 in here and we can torque that up and then all the motor mounts are done. So very close here, um, throw the water pump uh, housing on, I'll put the clutch arm on the fuel tank and uh, throw some oil in it and that'll be ready to fire it up. I'm not gonna put coolant in it immediately. Uh, I just wanna make sure that it's gonna fire and everything's good, uh, there's no weirdness. The um, cam arrangement in this motor is strange. Um, th normally on the sprockets on the camshafts, there's lines marked, um, intake and exhaust. You line them up with the top of um, the top of the uh, the head here. Uh, on this motor, it's actually lined up on the upper section here. But on the exhaust cam, there's a tick mark on both sides of the exhaust. Um, a sprocket and they're not marked intake or exhaust so what that is is intake top dead center or exhaust top dead center and these ones are just there's ticks and there's no the manual's not super clear on uh where to position it so i'm kind of stressed out about this i have a bit of anxiety here um to fire this out because the exhaust cam could be out 180 degrees i'm i'm quite certain that i got it right uh just a bunch of reading online um, but it's still, it's weird and it's just not super clear. So my, my OCD is kind of triggered a little bit with that. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll get the bits and pieces on here that we need and then I'll fire it up. Uh, and if it's good to go, then we'll put the rest of the stuff on. All right, we're pretty much wrapped up here. Um, I'm gonna have to fire it up anyway, make sure uh, that everything is good before I fully put it back together. Moment of truth. Let's see what I forgot to hook up. how quick that started that wasn't even a full crank over that was like half a turn and it boom fired cool uh so with that done uh i can i'm gonna fill the coolant and get the body panels and stuff back on get the stuff all um all buttoned down and then we should be good to go Very strange. Leaks with a bolt in, but doesn't leak with one out. So although the bolt length was right, it's a large flange and started to hit the uh, hit the casing here on the water pump. So we put some smaller flange stuff in there. The right length and right thread, just not the right uh, head. It's weird though that it stopped leaking as soon as I took the bolt out. We've got coolant in here, just gonna fire it up, let it run, uh, get up to operating temp and see whether we can burp any air. So 
So I got it all up to temp. Um, it should have blown all the air out of it and been pulling from the overflow tank. And we got the cooling system bled, um, no air in it anymore, so that's good. We're just gonna throw some body panels back on this guy and we'll be good to go for a ride tomorrow.